Hello again, everyone. Today I want to give you an update on how things are going with fountain pen transcription projects. So I had started with Homer the Odyssey after I had done all of the Watership Down transcription and basically I could not stick with Homer's The Odyssey. It was, it was too much. So I decided to switch books and I think this one's here to stay. It's just been a little bit slower going just because work's a little crazy. Things are a little different on that front. And um, yeah, things have just been generally kind of crazy. So I've had less time to actually do this kind of thing, um, doing transcribing. I'll put a link below to my latest, to the, or to the last, Watership Down transcription project video, which will have links to the prior ones. And then I will put a link to the video where I was showing my start with Homer's Odyssey. Um, you know, I mean, I, I think there were a couple of things that were going wrong there. One was the book, obviously. And the other was the size I was using. I was using a B6 and B6 just was a little too cramped for me for uh, transcription. So I've moved back to an A5. And the book I am, I am using is East of Eden by John Steinbeck. I, um, I'm a pretty big John Steinbeck fan. I lived in California, obviously, which is where John Steinbeck is from. Different area of California, but it still has sort of the California vibe um, and more Northern California vibe for sure, which is where I'm from. And um, it's very interesting going back and reading all of these older books that I've read before and, and really liked. Uh, there's some stuff that's really not PC anymore in some of these books. And um, yeah, that's all I'm gonna say about that. So to a certain extent, I have to ignore a little bit of that even though I am somewhat sensitive to that. But nonetheless, this is still a great book. Um, yeah, so I won't go too much into the book itself, but check it out. John Steinbeck, great author, especially if you're interested in sort of the history of Northern California um, and almost Central Coast area. All right, so let me put the book off to the side. Although before I do that, I do wanna show you that I'm using, I can take that out because it's not holding a place. Um, so I am using this Esther Brook page holder that's in the shape of a B which works really, really well for keeping the top of the book open. And for now, because I haven't really gotten through my, oh my God, I have a ton left. This has been really slow going, guys. I mean, this is like months and months and I'm only up to page 25. It's been slow. This is why you haven't been seeing a lot of fountain pen content because life's crazy. I've been getting more into art and trying to use that as an outlet for, you know, anger, frustration, et cetera, mental health and uh, not as much on the fountain pens and this kind of thing, like a transcription project. Still really enjoy this though, so I am gonna continue with it. So I've just been using the front flap of this book. Not all books, paperbacks will have this little flap, but that's what I'm using to hold my place for now until I get further on. And then this I'm using to hold open the top of the pages. Oh God, this is filthy, but I am gonna show it to you anyway. Uh, so this little book holder, I use to prop up the book. In fact, maybe there might be enough space to show you. Let's just go to where I am in the book. So it holds up the book like that. And then on the top here, I use the this little B to hold up the top. Because even with this that holds down the bottom of the book, the top sometimes falls down. So it's kind of hard to, um, be able to follow. The only problem with this is that it does obscure some of the text up at the top. So usually I push it up a little bit so that I can see and then push it back down once I've done with the top. But I am using it and I, and I think it's useful. Let me put that back on there. And so I am keeping the book in this little holder to kind of put it off to the side of my desk. I'm gonna put that over here for now and then I'm gonna show you the actual notebook that I am transcribing the book in. So this is in a uh, Speckled Fawns A5 
uh, Chatel Lane style notebook, and this is in the Toasted Flan color. This is a color that comes and goes and is somewhat limited in, in the times that it does come around. So don't expect Speckled Fawns to have this particular leather <laughs> when you go there, but I will put a link to Speckled Fawns because they do have a lot of offerings, especially in this Chatelaine model, which I really love. I think it's really, really great for, especially for one notebook. I feel like it's really, really good because it, like this is an A5 really thick notebook and it holds it really well. It has this little loop where you can put the, the leather band in there and then it has this front pocket which I haven't really been using lately but uh, you can put pens in here like if I have a pen that I'm using uh, at, at any given time and I haven't finished with it I can put it in here so that's kind of nice and let's go ahead and get in here and I think the paper that I'm using is a Cosmo Air Light notebook from an Etsy shop I'll see if I can find that link and send it to. I have this in the front folio pocket like this and that seems to be working pretty well. There's also this little flat pocket here and I purchased this before they changed the design so there's also now a folio pocket on this side which I actually kind of wish I had in this one because then I would put the back of the notebook in that back pocket so that it could be you know a true folio. And then this I haven't been using at all, which is just this zipper pocket in the back. But this is a really beautiful notebook and really, really nice. It's really, uh, this particular leather is really durable and rugged. Like I, it's almost impossible to scratch it. Okay, so Cosmo Air Light, I have been using for all of the titles of the chapters, the number chapters, etc. I have been using this Franklin Kristoff, I think this is a 46 XL because it's longer than a 46 model. And this is in the Sex and Candy colorway, uh, which has sort of a purplish body and then um, red down there on the bottom and then red up here on the, on the grip. And then I have a um, Platinum 3776 Music Nib in here. I was able to do that with a Flexible Nib Factory housing. So basically I went to Flexible Nib Factory, who I will link to down below, and I'll link to Franklin Kristoff as well. Um, so you go to uh, Flexible Nib Factory and you choose which pen you want to put your particular nib in. Like this I know has a Yovo housing unit in it. So you get a Yovo housing unit. And then I'm not going to go into all the details of how to do this, but you take the nib, the 3776 uh, uh, special nib out of your platinum pen, and then you put it into, I think this still has the original feed. Some of them, they give you an additional feed too, but this one just has the original feed. And then you put those into that housing and then you can just screw it into this. There's full instructions on how to do some of that stuff on the Flexible Nib Factory website. But all that is to say, I really, really love this. Uh, and you could just use a Platinum 3776 uh, music nib in, in an actual Platinum pen. I mean, that is obviously an option. Um, I just kind of wanted to mix it up and have a fun pen in here. But the, the Platinum music nib, nib works great for titles. So that's what I've used here. And I will do a little bit of a flip through of some of this. Uh, even though I'm only 25 pages in, I, it actually is quite a bit of writing. Uh, this is the beginning here. So this was with a Walltown Pen, Penworks hand-turned acrylic pen with Robert Oster Viola. And I was putting a little note as to which pens I liked and didn't like on this paper. So like I said, this is Cosmo Air Light paper and this particular pen I did not feel wrote very nicely on it. Um, this is with a bold nib. It just, I just felt like there was a little bit of drag. So I, I have put like up down on those kinds of things. Again, with that music nib. And this is um, Pilot Uroshizuku Neko Yunagi ink, which looks really, really beautiful in that music nib. And then the chapters are each labeled with that pen as well. 
This is a super eye-burning purple. That was Troublemaker Grapevine. But again, I did not find that this nib wrote well on this paper, which is a broad, which is kind of odd because I felt like broader nibs wrote better on Cosmo Air light paper, but these, those two did not. And those were essentially, um, they were either Bach or Yovo bold nibs. I can't remember which, but then we get on to here. I clearly liked writing with this one a little better because I wrote for a longer period of time and did indeed write a little up arrow. This was a uh, bold curved architect. And uh, this is Sailor Studio 970 and it's on another hand turned pen. Really, really love the, um, the writing, the way the writing looks with this nib and love the ink as well. And then here we've moved on to another ink with that same numbering with the, that nib. And this, one, you can always tell when I like one because I write more with it. So this is an Estherbrook Esty with a, a vintage 2968 nib. And this is Kyo Iro Cherry Blossom. That's the ink. And then here's another one, which I didn't write for very long, but it looks like I still like this one. This was another uh, Estherbrook SD. Clearly I was going through my SDs uh, with another vintage 9668 nib. And this is Fire and Ice by Robert Oster. And then here, this one got another thumbs up on this paper. This is a Shown Designs Black Ultim pen, which doesn't really matter. I mean, it's really the nib. <laughs> this is with a titanium number eight um, fine cursive italic nib, and this was with Kala Turtle Shaped Rice Cake ink. This is another one. I think I think it took me a little while to kind of get into the flow of writing with this particular nib because I don't think it looks as nice as the. Um, I don't think it looks as nice as this curved architect did, but it's still it was certainly lovely to write with. And here's another really interesting nib. Uh, this one, although I did not like this nib on this paper, this is an Aurora, um, I don't remember the model, but it had a gotcha nib, which is essentially uh, like, a, like a curved architect, I suppose, with Troublemaker Petrichor, and I wasn't really too fond of how it wrote, but I do like the way it looks. So those two things don't always go together. Um, and then here... We ha oh, I clearly liked this one a lot. This was, this is my Opus 88 with a Cartier number no. five vintage nib on it. Uh, and then this is Birmingham, Ohio River. So that was clearly a, um, I think, I think that Cartier nib is a fine, but I clearly really loved writing with that on this paper. And moving on to another ink. And this one I must have liked. Oh, and this happens occasionally. So this was an accidental missed page. And um, this happened more when I was using the Tomoe River thinner paper. I would skip pages like left and right because I wasn't really keeping track. I would just flip to the new page and not really feel to make sure there weren't two together. But it clearly happens with Cosmo Air Light as well. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with this blank page eventually, but you know. We'll see. I still haven't done anything with the blank pages in my other um, transcription books. And oh, one thing I didn't focus on before is I did leave a line in between each of the paragraphs. I felt like the spacing between lines in here is a little bit tight on the Cosmo Air Light notebooks. Um, I, this is just a dot grid that I think, I'm not sure if you can actually get lined, but the dot grid I find a little bit close together. Um, and I had the same problem with the B6 Cosmo Air Light paper as well. So what I what I, I sort of picked a middle ground. I did each paragraph um, one line after another and then put an extra line in between the paragraphs. All right. Hmm. I think that meant I was indifferent. <laughs> this is a, uh, a Keras Customs Vertex with a medium nib with Sailor Georgia. I was just sort of on the fence there. And you'll see here, this is how I take care of mistakes. I'll usually just block them out if I if I can't um, correct them. But you know, I mean, that that's just gonna stay there and that's fine with me. Okay, this next one, clearly I had a problem with it. This was an Opus 88 Mini with a Twisby stub nib. Um, I ended up replacing this Twisby stub nib and partially because of this writing experience, it just, it's, it was a dud nib basically. And once I changed it out, 
the pen was fine. Um, and this is Troublemaker Mi uh, Milky Ocean. And this is not necessarily how this would show up. The nib would dry out. Like it, the, it would just get more and more skimpy on the ink where it became so light that it just, I was like, I'm not writing with this anymore. <laughs> but I think this is more of what you would get with that ink. And then here, this is actually a pen that I have not showed on the channel before, which um, I can do if you want. Um, this is my Le Bon Skeleton Rainbow Fountain Pen with a bold nib. Uh, but again, this is another broad nib that I did not like writing on this paper with. And this is the, the ink is Le Bon Zeus Purple. And now that I'm looking at all these, I think that all of these broad nibs that I didn't like on this paper are all Bach broad nibs. So that's just something for me to remember for the future. If I'm using Cosmo Air Light paper, don't use a Bach broad nib. <laughs> and I'm still looking forward to the new Tomoe River paper from the new company that purchased it. So we'll see. I, I still love the old Tomoe River paper. That's still my favorite, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. I wish I could get some notebooks with some different paper as well, because there's actually paper that I like better than the Cosmo Air Light. All right, so this is another one. Uh, this it was a Platinum Preppy, an 03, and this had Kala Turtle Shaped Rice Cake. And see, now this is a, a much smaller nib, and I also didn't end up liking this one on this paper. And here, this one I clearly liked because I wrote for longer. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't. Oh, that's interesting. Maybe I just pushed through, but or maybe I wanted to like it and then didn't end up liking it. So this is a Franklin Kristoff uh, Model 45 with a Nagahara broad cursive italic nib. This is Sailor 162. I think this nib and this ink goes really, really well together. I think they both um, show off their qualities really well. And that's interesting. So I liked this one and then I didn't write a lot with it. I clearly was having a tough day because it was, <laughs> I was having a hard time making mistakes and all that kind of stuff. So this is, um, I'm calling this a burl hybrid, but it's essentially a, a hand turned pen made with wood and acrylic. And then I have a Bach extra fine semi flex nib on here. And the semi flex, although I said I liked it here, this is also Ackerman Indigo as the ink. Although I said I liked it, it um, I had some problems with ink flow clearly because you can see that like it would it would be light and then a little bit darker, light and a little bit darker. So I still have to I still have to get get with the semi flex nib and figure it out. All right, so this was another somewhat longer one, and this one I did end up liking. Uh, it does seem like I do like the more architect shaped nibs on this paper. So this is my Polar Lights hand turned pen from Butterknife Creations, and this is just one of the cheap long knife nibs that I got off of Etsy, and it's like an architect and. It, I, I really enjoyed writing with it, although I don't think the writing looks as good as a regular architect nib does, but you never know. It could be the ink and the nib combination. And then this is Diamine Nightshade, which was in the Inkvent calendar uh, in 2021. And now this one I love the look of, and it looks like I did actually like this one. This is from my Kaweco All Sport Hello Kitty pen with a fine nib. The fine nib just came with it, and clearly I really enjoyed this one here. This is Pilot Iroshizuku Yamabudo. No wonder I liked the ink, because that's one of my favorite inks. And then this one, I think this is the last one I have, but I really love the way this particular writing and ink look together. Um, so this was just a, another hand-turned pen with a broad cursive italic nib. I think, I think that broad cursive italic nib I got from... Um, fpnibs.com. If I said before fpnibs.com for the housings, I meant flexiblenibs.com. Um, either way, I'll put the links to both of those places down below. Um, FP Nibs sells nibs and does nib grinding, and then Flexible Nib Factory has the housing. So I can't remember if I messed that up or not earlier. And I actually did not put a rating on this, um, but I do, I did like like writing with it. So I think I'm going to actually go ahead. Let's just use this for now. I'm going to go ahead and put a little, oop, put a little up arrow there. And we probably should put that like that as well. 
And I'm trying to note, it looks like I've been su successful so far. <laughs> I've been trying to note the ink, the pen, the nib after each section that I've written. I tend to write in shorter sessions. So that's kind of like, and I don't like to carry over a pen into another session. Although this one I think I did because it, it's just been crazy, people. <laughs> um, but yeah, but now I'm now I'm ready for a new section with a new pen and ink, and I haven't really picked one out. I've gotten a, I've only gotten a couple of fountain pens uh, in the last few months, um, and I I've, I've moved my fountain pens to a different place where I don't have my ink, which is probably a bad idea. But it, it was just sort of a storage problem in one place and the other. Um, basically I have too much ink to put where I ha now have my fountain pens. So I've been selectively, um, bringing ink down to where my pens are. Uh, and that has not really been working out all that much because I don't have a lot of time to think about that stuff. But anyway, so that's the end of what I have so far. I think that I might end up having to use two of these books for the transcription of this book because it is pretty long and I'm only on page 25 and you know I've taken up quite a bit of this book already and how many pages is this book total almost 600 <laughs> it is like exactly 600 so yeah I'm probably going to be using at least one other notebook and whether I want to use a different paper for the second notebook I'll kind of you know play that by ear once I get there um but yeah, so this is my new transcription project. It's going to be continuing on. <laughs> I have not decided to stop yet, uh, but it is taking me longer. So this one will probably last me for quite a while finishing this one. Um, but it is a good book and I enjoy reading it again. So that's always nice too. And in, it's funny because if I re just read a book, I tend to read not, not super fast, but I, you know, I can go through a book in a fairly good clip. But when I read it this way, I'm reading such a small chunk of the book at a time that I feel like I really get to take in each little section of the book. So some things that I wouldn't notice before, I'll, I'll notice it this time when I'm going through fairly slowly. So so it's kind of fun to read that way. It's almost like slow reading. You know how they have slow food. I guess it's kind of like that. You, have, you get a little bit more enjoyment out of the book when you're reading it that slowly. At least that's the way it is for me. All right. Well, that's all I had for you today. Feel free to subscribe to my channel to keep track of future videos. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you have any questions about this setup or anything else related to transcription projects, let me know down below and I'll answer when I can. I hope to see you next time. But in the meantime, have a great day. Thanks. Bye.